Hi, I'm Joe Saunders with Miniature Landscape Hobbies, and in this episode, we're going to reveal all the secrets in Battlefront Miniatures new book for Flames of War Late War, Bulge British Forces. Miniature Landscape Hobbies is proudly supported by these sponsors. Bulge British Forces for Flames of War Late War is about to launch, and this has me pretty excited. Why? Well, Late War is my favorite period in Flames of War, and most importantly, at least to me, this book adds a significant number of new tanks. Most of my viewers know it's really kind of sad just how much I enjoy painting and weathering armored vehicles. So, more options and more model kits for track behemoths makes me really happy. But enough about that. You're here to learn about what is in the book. So let's take a look. Please support us by subscribing on Patreon. Our subscribers receive a 5% discount on paint and building supplies from Torchlight Games, promotional products from Event Horizon Hobbies, free access to 3D print files, and a whole lot more. If you wish to make a one-time donation, click the button for Super Thanks. Recently, Battlefront's Flames of War releases have been focusing on mid-war anthologies, including adding the Midmore monsters back into the game. This has been a little controversial for some historical purists in the hobby. Because of this, it's nice to get back to the Bulge British Forces, which is a very straightforward book. There is one exception to this, but we'll get into that later. As always with Battlefront's books, Bulge British Forces is nicely designed and laid out. The customary maps are here, and there's a wealth of historical detail. All of this is present to give context to the forces in the book, and it covers from the Normandy breakout up to the crossing of the Rhine. I always enjoy reading the background material in these books, and it provides a nice primer on history that you can use in your games. Or, it can be used as a signpost to point you towards other historical books, for more in-depth study. One thing that you'll find in the background information is details on Operation Market Garden. Bring up the pips. This operation is a longtime favorite of World War II wargamers, and it's been noticeably absent in the Battlefront 4th edition publications. Until now. There is a significant amount of background information here, and some excellent new units to allow you to play Market Garden themed games or a whole campaign. This is pretty exciting when you combine it with the models from Bulge German Forces. This way you should be able to have some really excellent and historically accurate battles. You know, using the correct tanks. Unlike this. Anyway, moving along, in the book we can see the addition of a large number of really cool new unit types. Tanks, infantry, artillery, air power, there's something new for every type. The old favorites are still here too. And here we are ready to introduce the Comet. Likely the ultimate British tank of the war. It also looks cool, and it'll be a ton of fun to paint. Stats-wise, you'll see the Comet is not overly powerful. Just a nice medium tank with decent armor, slightly better speed than most medium tanks, and it has all-round decent stats. But it also has the Comet 77mm gun. At AT-14, firepower 3 plus with smoke, this gun's pretty spectacular. It's not the heaviest by late war standards, but for an allied tank with a manageable points cost, the Comet is a serious contender that'll scare your opponent's Tiger Ones and Panthers. It will also make Panzer IVs into mincemeat. 
Next up is the Challenger, a tank that's similar to the Comet with slightly lower armor, but an even more impressive gun, the 17-pounder. AT-15 is more fierce than the 77mm, but the Challenger's lower armor does make this tank less of a contender for top dog on the battlefield. To compensate, you can mix Cromwells and Challengers together in the Cromwell Armored Troop. This way, you can absorb high AT shots on the front armor of your Cromwells with the mistaken target rule to keep the Challenger's big gun in the fight. For those of you who like to use captured armor, or who just love the Panther, you can actually add one to your British force. In the Churchill Guards Armored Squadron, there is an option to take Cuckoo, a lone captured Panther. This adds some fun variety, and of course, when used at range, the Panther is pretty scary. But, as there only was ever one of these, one is all you can get in the game. The rest of the armored options are pretty much the same as from previous late war British books. You have your selection of Churchills, including all of the powerful ones, Cromwells and Shermans. The Firefly is here too, to provide more 17 pounders for anti-tank goodness. Interestingly, you'll also have access to the American Chaffee. This cool light tank is a replacement for the aging Stuart but don't worry, if the steward is your favorite, you can still take them in your forces. This brings us to infantry. I must admit that at our house, British infantry have somewhat of a love-hate relationship with Mitchell and I. Their stats make them mean in close combat, but the 5 plus rally often cancels out their utility, because once they get pinned, they often remain there. In the new Black Bull Motor Company, you see a partial way to offset this by providing the M5 half-track as a troop carrier. This is a cool option, but it's still unlike their American counterparts, because the British M5s don't come armed, and you need to pay an upgrade to add any 50 cals. And now we move on to the next unit, and here it gets really cool. This is because the 51st Highlanders can use Ram Kangaroos as a transport. Basically, this is a medium tank with no turret and a passenger rating of 3. This also means that as a transport, the Kangaroo is front armor 6. That's Team Yankee levels of infantry protection. But that's not really the nifty part. For that, you need to look at this special rule close assault. With this rule, troops can charge straight from the kangaroos. When you add all this up, you can see that your British infantry can now leverage their awesome 3 plus assault and counter attack ratings without the fear of the 5 plus rally. You will, of course, find some real serious elite infantry in the book too. This comes in the form of the famous units that participated in Operation Market Garden. First up is Frost Parachute Company. These lightly equipped troops have awesome stats to reflect their elite nature as airborne soldiers, but they also have this, a 2 plus last stand. That's just crazy. These guys simply will not run when they're in a fight. Next is the Glider Pilot Regiment. These come in the form of very small, lightly equipped units as well, but with excellent all-round stats, including a 3-plus in their motivation and skill ratings. But one really cool thing here is that they have the special rule MRC Body Armor. This unique rule actually allows the unit to cancel hits from artillery after they fail their regular saving throws. I don't think there's anything like this anywhere else in the game. Now we turn to what I think is a bit of an odd but cool addition to the book. 
mainly because I'm Canadian. This new kit is launching alongside Bulge British Forces, and it makes several vehicles. It makes the Kangaroo, which we've already discussed, the Sexton, which is an artillery carrier for the 25-pounder, and this, the Ram Tank. The Ram has a company option in the book, but it was actually not used in this form in the war. The Canadians built it, but it was converted to other uses because the Sherman was already available. Playing the What If game, though, Battlefront has added them back in as an option. The stats for the Ram, honestly, are a little underwhelming, especially for late war, and the Ram appears to be just like any Sherman. Nevertheless, I'm excited to make a company of these. Besides the fact that they'll be rare, you might ask why I'm so interested. And the reason is because I live just minutes from Base Borden in central Ontario, where there are a large number of rams standing as gate guardians and on display. Whenever I go to the base, I always get a time to walk around them, and consequently I know the ram pretty well. So I'd like to use this distinctly Canadian vehicle in my games, and I feel it's my patriotic duty to unleash these on my Flames of War opponents. We arrive now at the support choices. There are a lot of them. Too many to cover here, in fact. So I'll just detail the really interesting new stuff. Here is the Archer, an armored carrier for the 17-pounder. It's in all ways just like any tank hunter, sort of like the German Martyr. But then you see this, rear firing. As far as the rules go, I think this is unique. This is a unit just begging to be used in conjunction with the ambush rules. And the new rules title probably provides fertile ground for off-color comments while playing Flames of War. Mind you, none of the players I know would stoop to that level. As I talked about before, there's also the Sexton. I know some players really like the 25 pounders, otherwise it's a discount M7 Priest. It might make a nice addition to your force when you don't have a lot of points to spend on artillery. Now here is another interesting artillery choice, the Land Mattress Rocket Troop. This is a nifty piece with the Salvo template and also the Saturation Bombardment rule. If you're an allied player who's jealous of the Nibelwerfer, you don't have to be any more. Plus, this weapon was used primarily by Canadian troops, so I feel the compulsion to use it. But don't let this trick you into thinking I have special knowledge about it, because I don't. I really don't know why it was actually called a mattress. This brings us to the scenarios. There's an interesting selection here with some river crossing and water landing themes. Lastly, there is the normal catalog selection, which shows all the new models that are covered in the book. These will let us know what will be available in the upcoming months. So there you have it, my whirlwind tour of the new Flames of War book, Bulge British Forces. If you're a late war player, you are sure to want it. For this reason, I suggest you go out to get it as soon as it's available. And while you're at the store, remember to buy an extra bottle of beige paint. You're going to need it to paint those cool mantlet covers on your new Comet tanks. That's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as I enjoyed making it. Please remember to subscribe Press the bell button so you get immediate notification on our videos. And until next time, remember to keep building life in miniature.